Hi, it's great to be with you, even if it is via the video camera. This morning, I thought we'd play a quick game. And uh, the game's ever so easy, it's not too complicated. In a moment, I will show you a picture of an object to do a sport. The clue's in the picture. See if you can guess it before the person next to you. So when the picture comes on, don't shout out too loudly, just turn to the right or to the left and say to that person, it is, and tell them the sport before they can turn to you and tell you what it is. So have you got it? The object will come up, turn to the person next to you, and we'll see who can guess what sport it is, first of all. Okay, here's the first one. Have a think, the picture, now. Okay, you got it. Table tennis table tennis not too complicated let's try another one are you ready here goes again if you said bowling eh, eh, it's 10 pin bowling so you've got to get that extra bits if you want all the points here's a slightly harder one The object's a shuttlecock and the sport is badminton. Badminton. You ready for the next one? Here goes. Yep, the sport is archery. Archery. Okay, we've got two more to go. You ready? Easy one, this. And the answer, of course, is rugby. Okay, this is the last one. Get ready. Again, it's quite easy, so you've got to be very fast. Go. Okay, I'm not quite sure how many you got, but if you got all of them, give yourself a pat on the back. Football is the probably the most played sport in all the world. Certainly my favourite sport. And like many of you, I've got my favourite team and my favourite players. But there's one thing in football that I don't really like. It's these two things. The yellow and the red card. It means you've committed a foul and offence. And the yellow card is your first warning. And if you do it again or make a similar mistake, you get the red card. And that means you're sent out of the game. And for some uh, uh, problems, you might not be back for one game or two game or three games if you get the red card. So you have to be very careful in football. You could say that football is not very forgiving. You make a mistake, you get punished. You make another mistake, off you go and you could be banned for a long time. There doesn't seem to be any forgiveness in football. And forgiveness is what I want to talk about this morning. Christians believe Jesus brings forgiveness. And that was a feature throughout the life of Jesus. Have a look at this short video and it will just tell you one of the stories in the Bible where Jesus demonstrated forgiveness. Stories of the Bible. Jesus and the sinful woman. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. There were a group of Jewish leaders called the Pharisees who heard Jesus speak often. One of the Pharisees, named Simon, asked Jesus to have dinner with him. Come on over. Oh, okay. Sounds good. So Jesus went over to his house and a certain sinful woman heard that he was eating there. She went to the house and brought a jar filled with expensive perfume. She kneeled at Jesus' feet and cried. 
Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them with her hair. She kissed his feet and put the perfume on them. Simon saw this and said to himself, Yeah, if this man really were a prophet, he'd know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Blah. Then Jesus said, Simon, I have something to say to you. Ah, uh, okay. And he told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one, thank you, and 50 pieces to the other. Yeah, thanks. Oh, hello again. But neither of them could repay him. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. So he kindly forgave them both. Eh, that's okay. Canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon said that the one who owed him more loved him more. Jesus said, Yep. That's right. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water or wash the dust off my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. I tell you, her sins, and there are many, have been forgiven, so she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said among themselves, who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Jesus often went around forgiving people who were sorry for the wrong things they'd done, like that lady in the story. I like the incident where a man was taken to Jesus. This man, his legs were paralysed, he couldn't walk, but he had four friends who cared about him and they'd heard that Jesus was a healer and able to make people better. So they put this man on a stretcher and they carried him to where Jesus was. When they got to the house, they must have been really disappointed because there was a huge crowd. Everyone wanted to see Jesus. You couldn't squeeze through the door and you couldn't even look through the windows. There were heads and faces everywhere. But the people had a clever idea. In Israel, the land of Jesus, all the houses have a square roof and a staircase along the side of them so that you, you can actually go up the side of the stairs onto the roof quite easily. And that's what they did. They picked up their friend and they took him up the stairs. Then they started to dig a hole in the roof. Well, everyone inside was furious. They were getting covered in plaster and dust and dirt and all kinds of stuff. They were angry. But I don't think Jesus was angry. He looked up and he saw the faith, the trust of those four friends. And when the hole was big enough, they lowered the man down to where Jesus was. Everyone expected Jesus to say, this man's crippled, so pick up your bed, go home, you're healed. But he didn't. He said to the man, all the wrong things you've ever done are forgiven. Well, the crowd was shocked. They went, oh, what? Who can forgive sins except God alone? Jesus looked at them and said, which is harder to say your sins are forgiven or pick up your bed and go home? Well, they all said the second one, pick up your bed. That is visible. We can see that. If you forgive people, we don't know if that's true or not. So Jesus said, OK. To show you I can do what's invisible, I'll do something that is visible. To show you I can do something really hard, I'll do something that's easier. He said to the man, pick up your bed and go home. And to the amazement of the crowd, the man picked up his bed and off he went. And for a second time, the crowd went, oh, who is this man? Well, in a few weeks time, Christmas will be here. And I guess we'll ask that question again. Who is this baby, this man who came into the world 2000 years ago? Mary and Joseph were told what to name that baby. 
an angelic being said to them, you give him the name Jesus because he will rescue, he will save, he will forgive his people from their sins. And the name Jesus means saviour, rescuer, one who forgives. And Jesus practised what he preached. There came a time when people took hold of Jesus and they nailed him to a cross. It was horrible. He was tortured and beaten up. But do you know what Jesus prayed? He didn't say, God, get even with them, deal with them. No. He prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't understand what they're doing. Now, forgiveness is always hard because the person who's been hurt has to forgive the person who is guilty. So you do the forgiving, even though you're the victim, and the guilty person seems to get away with it, Scott 3. But forgiveness is always the best way. That's how it is with us and God. The Bible says we have offended God by the wrong things we say and do and think. But God is in the business of forgiving us. And if God forgives us all the wrong things we've done, we ought to forgive others who do things against us. Jesus put it this way in a story. A man had been forgiven a million pounds, but then he met someone who only owed him a pound and he wouldn't forgive him that one pound. Imagine that. He had a huge debt forgiven, but he wouldn't forgive the other man a small debt. And of course, that's a picture of us in God. God forgives all our wrongdoings in Jesus. That's a huge debt. So we ought to forgive people when they make small debts against us. Well, time is almost up, so let's conclude with a prayer. Loving God, thank you that you are a God who forgives and forgets. Help us to learn from you and give us the power and the strength and the desire to forgive and to forget those who have hurt us. Amen.